Hi, and welcome to another product presentation from TIS. We're delighted today to show you our new uh, EV Test 100, working in conjunction with our TIS MFT Pro. You'll see on the third page that the EVSE test uh, icon is now on the MFT Pro. Anybody with an existing MFT Pro, we can update this for you free of charge, either on a calibration day or if you get it back to our office and we'll give you the update with the icon. You'll see that the EV Test 100 um, has got an optical lead that basically plugs into the MFT Pro and that just allows both testers to talk to each other to take you through the full auto sequence. On our EV Test 100, you can simulate an earth fault and an electrical fault, and ours is also CAT3 to protect against transient voltages. So we'll crack on with the uh, auto sequence. So if we click on the EVSE test icon, it's asking us to set it up. So as you can see, single phase or three phase, we're mine single phase. We've got non-ventilated or a ventilated pod, mine's non-ventilated. And then we've got the current rating from 13 amp to 63 and mine's 20 amp. So once you've set that up, tick the box, then press go. And on the coloured screen, it shows you exactly where to put your test leads and where your dials are. If this flashes, it tells you that you need to change the dials from the last uh, obviously setting that you've got it on. So it's asking for the CP state to be set to A, the PP state to NC and the fault status to OK. And I've already set my EV test 100 up so the dials are in the correct place. So it's now ready to perform a continuity test. So we tick the box, we press go and now it's going to conduct a continuity test. And the reading's good, it gives me a thumbs up. So all I do then is I press the save button and that moves on to the next sequence. Insulation test, as you can see, it's flashing again. My dials don't need to be moved, but we've had to change the lead configuration, which I've already done. So that's why it's flashing um, to tell you to, to change the leads. So it's ready to do an insulation test. So we tick the box. It's a 500 volt insulation test, press go. And as you can see, it does the full insulation test. So LP and MPE in the push of one button. There you go, the insulation test is good. It's given me a thumbs up. Again, we need to save to move on to the next status. As you can see, it's now not flashing. Um, so we don't need to change the leads or change the dials. And this is checking the status of the pod and actually making sure that nothing's plugged in and actually it's not delivering any voltage or any amperage. And as you can see there, it's not no voltage and it's not delivering any current whatsoever because we've not actually engaged the uh, actual EV pod so we move on to the next status and as you can see it's flashing there and telling me to change my dial so cp is now set to b which actually now the actual pod is asking for a charge but the car isn't actually calling for a charge and it's to change my pp state to 20 amps which i've done and the fault status is okay so we now actually see whether it will deliver a current but not a voltage because the car's not calling for a charge. So we tick the box and it automatically starts to test. And as you can see, it's not delivering a voltage, but it's delivering the right amount of current should the car ask for the charge. The next sequence, you can see it's asking me now to move my dial to C. So now what this is checking is that the actual charger is ready to send the charge to the car and the car is actually calling for a charge. So we tick the box and hopefully we see some voltage at the top and we can we can see it's delivering the right amount of voltage and the right amount of current for the car to actually charge so that's all good so we tick the box and as you can see now it's asking flashing at the bottom there to, to actually put a fault on the circuit so it's asking for us to put an earth fault in so we've now changed the dial to an earth fault and now, obviously, it's going to make sure that it's not delivering any current or any voltage because it's picked up that there's an earth fault. And as you can see, there's no voltage and there's no current at the bottom. So that's all good. We save that and it moves on to the next sequence. And now we're simulating an actual electrical fault. So hopefully, turn our dial to electrical fault, tick the box, 
And again, we shouldn't be delivering any voltage or any current and the tester actually shows us that as well. So no voltage, no current. So that's all the status checks done. And we're now gonna move on to a, a loop impedance test. And as you can see, it's flashing in the corner there. So we need to change his dials. So PP to 20 amp. We need to change the CP state to C and obviously the fault status to OK, so the charger is ready. All good, tick the box, and now it's gonna perform a loop impedance test. And as you can see, it gives you all four results on one screen, so PSC, PFC, light and neutral, and LP as well, without tripping any RCDs on the circuit. There we go, it's performed the loop test. The readings are good, my RCD hasn't tripped, and we've got the result. So we move on to the next sequence. So this is an RCD test, type A, at 30 milliamps. Again, it's not flashing, so we don't need to change as dials. So we just tick the box, and it's now ready to perform, as you can see there, a 30 milliamp type A RCD test. So we push the button. It's tripped the RCD. It's come out in 86 milliseconds, and the test is good. So we move on to the next sequence. The tester now is warning me that I need to reset my dial on my EV test 100 back to A and I need to reset the RCD in the pod and then I need to move my EV test 100 back to C and now it's going to perform a 6 milliamp DC uh, test, RCD test. So again, my dials don't need to be moved, tick the box. And as you can see there, it's going to perform a 6 milliamp DC RCD test. The RCD test is done. 2.4 milliamps, 78 milliseconds. So the RCD test is all good. We save it. And that end of the test sequence, that's all now saved. So I need to tick the box. And now all them test results are saved to my MFT Pro. And that is our MFT Pro EV working in conjunction with our EV Test 100. Thanks for watching.